high school television show that in we the know world. Of. <laughs> in the world that runs weekly. We're so proud of ourselves. In the universe, even. This is just as good as it gets. Oh no. <laughs> oh. A big, big dumb joke. joke. Well, this week I thought I'd keep in the spirit of Halloween, even though it's. Well, even it's though on we didn't Tuesday. do a Halloween show. Yeah. And this joke is accredited to Kelly Rathman, so if it's stupid, it's her fault. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be. Yeah. Why didn't the skeleton cross the road? I don't know. Why didn't it Because it didn't have uh, guts. Uh, <laughs> okay, we have a uh, top ten tonight. Uh, written by uh, the WCHS Today authors. Oh. We'll just say that. That's good. Oh and it'll be written, or I mean, uh, read. read by Bye. Dwayne Warner. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not proud of you. Okay, the top ten for tonight is Top 10 costumes Tammy Faye Baker would wear or should have worn for Halloween, okay? <laughs> and remember, folks, I don't write them, I just read them. Okay. <laughs> Top 10. Number, number 10 is a happy go lucky choir girl from Tampa. Uh, okay. Yeah. Number 9, Mr. Ed. <laughs> Wilbur. <laughs> Number eight, Mascara Goddess of Beauty. <laughs> Number seven, Shira Princess of Power. <laughs> I don't write them, I just read them. Number six, uh, Conan the Barbarian. Number five, <laughs> any of the members of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> okay. Uh, number four, Ronald McDonald. <laughs> number three, uh, Sly Stallone. <laughs> At least Mr. Woodward. Number two, Run Tin Tin. <laughs> <laughs> Which I agree with. And number one, top ten costumes Tammy Faye Baker should have worn for Halloween. I don't write these. <laughs> Number one, any animal requiring requiring a muzzle. two teachers from the high school and we'll just call it our teacher of the month segment and tonight we have for you Mr. Blair. know about that. Uh, now I do. Yeah. Now I know all about So you are Mr. Blair and I am him. <laughs> what what do you teach Mr. Blair? I teach Spanish. Spanish. Mm -hmm. How long have you been teaching WCHS? I've been teaching at WCHS since the fall of 1977. That's a long time. Um, what grades do you teach? What what years? Well when I came here um, when I came here I didn't teach just Spanish. When I came here uh, I taught a little math also. And I used to teach algebra in Spanish. And then over the years, as uh, languages became important for college and things like that, and the, and the language enrollment grew, um, uh, I left algebra for full-time Spanish. And then, even later on after that, Mrs. Freeberg left English for Spanish. So now there's actually, there's actually two Spanish teachers, a full-time French teacher and a full-time German teacher. And when I started here, there was part-time 
Spanish, part-time French, and part-time German. So it's really gotten to be a lot bigger since... Language program has grown as, as colleges and things like that have increased their language requirements. Now when you were in college, um, getting ready to be a teacher, was it Spanish that you had intended to teach or anything? That when I went to college, I, uh, like a lot of people going to college, I was undecided as to what I wanted to do. And, uh, Where did you go to college? Went to Bradley. I started at the University of Illinois and then came home to Bradley because I got a job here in Peoria. And um, uh, when I was a freshman at the U of I, I didn't know exactly what it was I wanted to do. And, and so I took your basic required courses and things like that and uh, transferred back to Bradley my sophomore year because, uh, like I said, I got a job in Peoria that required me to be here all the time. And um, it wasn't until, I guess, the summer between my uh, sophomore year at Bradley and my junior year at Bradley that I decided uh, uh, I'd try education for a career. Why not? Um, I figured uh, this way I could have uh, three months a year off. So. <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, I studied education and um, decided at the time that uh, I would major in Spanish and math, since those were the two uh, subjects I seemed to do best at. So I did. And uh, came to Washington as a, a math teacher and a Spanish teacher. And uh, after doing a, a semester of student teaching at Manual, Jerry Manual, and came here, uh, Mr. Torrey hired me here, and I've uh, been here ever since. Didn't you live in Spain for a while? I did. And uh, when I was a boy, <laughs> a little boy, uh, my dad worked for the government for a while. And uh, so we moved to Spain and lived there for a while straighten this out. You were not born in Spain. No, okay. no, I was born in St. <laughs> Francis Hospital in Peoria, Illinois. So you really are from right around here. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt about absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, what, what extra, other than teaching, which you know, sure takes a lot of your time, what other school activities do you sponsor or participate in? Well, the first year I got here, Washington was looking for a high school newspaper sponsor. Uh, the year I got here, Mr. Madsen, who teaches English here, was was retiring from the high school newspaper. Um, so after a year of being on staff, uh, I was asked if I would take over the high school newspaper. So I did, and and I've been the advisor for the high school newspaper ever since. How has that gone? Well, we have our up years and our down years, just like everything yes. else. Uh, this is an up year. This <laughs> is an up year, actually. Yeah. Um, we we've put out uh, 16 pages, more than any other high school in the area that I know of, other than Richwoods and Central, which has also put out 16. Um, we plan on coming out again with uh, four pages again next week. So we all in all, it's been a pretty good year we so We just far. Uh, commented last week, I think, or two weeks ago, that we were amazed at how many papers we had already seen, and last year we'd only seen maybe two at the most. Mm -hmm. All year. Three, all year. So we were rather impressed with a lot depends on the strength of the high school editor. Um, if there's a strong high school editor who's motivated to do some things, you get a lot of pages. If uh, you get a high school editor who's not motivated, you don't get as many pages. And uh, from the very beginning, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a Mr. Blair newspaper. It's not a, it's not a staff newspaper. It's, it's uh, supposed to be for the students. And the more students you have take part in it and contribute to it, the more successful it is. The more pages you get out. Have you had um, much problems dealing with like, censorship? And no, a few years ago, a couple years ago, I had an editor who uh, was a crusader. Uh, he he uh, liked to crusade for various things that he felt important. And he and I had sort of a running battle about censorship. And at, at times, I would, uh, I would yank things that I thought were inappropriate. Um, and when I would do that, I would write in there that this has been yanked by me for various reasons. And uh, it, became a, it became a pretty uh, controversial topic between him and me. But as the year progressed, it became something that people looked forward to, to see what he was going to try to uh, get printed and to see what I would yank. Um, this issue has gone to the Supreme Court a lot of times. Um, and the Supreme Court has always come down on the side of... Uh, the high school newspaper advisor as the, as the final as the final authority in high school newspapers. Although 
there is now a case before the Supreme Court, even as we sit here today. Um, a student newspaper in New York has taken a case all the way to the Supreme Court about, about censorship. And it'll be interesting now to see what, what happens if the Supreme Court's going to reverse itself on that and give high school editors the final say. But here in Washington, we have a, a little bit different system in that our high school newspaper is fully supported by the district. There is no outside advertising, which gives the district then the final say. Those who are putting up the money have the final say. Um, so if the students here want to want to start a newspaper without administration or without faculty interference, the best thing to do would be to start their own and go out and sell their own advertising, which is something they can do and something that's never been done here. And then they could print whatever they want. Basically. But um, we've had trouble over the years with distribution. Uh, for example, the school superintendent has control over the distribution. So let's say, for example, an article appears in the high school newspaper that the school superintendent doesn't like. He can decide that distribution shall occur between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. on Sunday morning. Then there's nobody here to get it, right? So, so in essence, they have control over distribution. Some high schools over the years have printed underground newspapers and tried to distribute them off school property. Central, Peoria Central has, their, the name of their high school newspaper is The Opinion. And, and every once in a while, they come out with an underground newspaper called The Opium, which is a takeoff on The Opinion. And every once in a while, they get in big trouble for that over there. But it's kind of funny. <laughs> Don't you also write for the Journal Star? I do. I write part-time for the Journal Star on weekends as a sports reporter. And that's the job that brought me back to Bradley while I was going to Bradley. So you've been doing that for a while? I've been doing that for a long time. It's, uh, uh, it's something I like to do. It's relaxing on weekends and uh, keeps me involved in athletics, which I have an interest in. I see a lot of football and basketball every year on the high school level, and other things too. I uh, write a bowling column in the wintertime for the Journal Star. <laughs> and not too many people read bowling columns unless they're bowlers. And other than um, the newspaper? Other than the newspaper, what am I involved in? Right. This, exactly. year, this year, I'm the uh, project director for Operation Snowball, which is... Um, as many people know, a pretty successful program here. and The directorship of the program changes every two years. Mike Plessner started the program, and uh, then the program was uh, transferred to a different board, and uh, I'll be director for two years. Then after I'm finished, somebody else will become director for two years. And uh, this is our team director right here <laughs> for at least the first one. So that takes up a little bit of my time, too. Snowballs. First weekend's coming up pretty soon. Two weeks from tomorrow is the start of it. Right. Two weeks from tomorrow. I know. So all you people who are involved in that, we'll be doing some work on that this coming week. Um, I just had a couple other questions. Uh, Go ahead. What What's your favorite part or favorite thing about this high school? What's my favorite thing about this yeah, high what, school? What do you What sticks out in your mind that you? This couch. Other Very couch. comfortable, yes. Um, where do I think Washington excels as compared to other high schools? I think Washington excels as compared to other high schools in that we have a very low, extremely low turnover of faculty. Uh, for example, this year no new teachers were hired. Uh, at most high schools, you're going to get on the average of five to six new teachers per year. Most of the people that have been here have been here forever. I mean, they started their careers here and they end their careers here, which means that basically they're pretty happy teaching here. Um, to me, that says a lot for the programs and the, the quality of programs that we can offer. We do offer strong programs here. Uh, students who take advantage of the programs we offer find themselves fairly well educated and ready to go off to any college or university anywhere or do anything they want. We have a strong vocational program. We have a strong college preparation program. All of our programs across the board are strong. And uh, we've been cited and awarded for that over the years and down through the years. So for that reason, I'm proud to uh, be associated with, with uh, this district. Yeah. Nope. That's all.
all my questions. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, on. I'm glad to, I'm glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thanks a lot. Entitled Never Mind What Happened, How Did It End? Okay. Very good on your English there. How you. did it end? All right, end? why don't you just uh, read right off there the other stuff like uh, dates and okay. um, time? Um, this year it'll be on November 9th and 10th, which is starts the opening production is a week from today. And in the West Gym. And curtain time is at 7 30 p.m. and the Admission prices is two fifty for adults and a dollar fifty for students. And if you have an activity pass for the high school students, you get into it free. Okay. So it's a good offer. All right. <laughs> can uh, can we maybe keep this in front of the desk yes. here? Yes. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could just tell um, us a little bit about uh, the basic okay. plot, the rundown on. Uh, okay. Plot. Well, the play is basically about a modern-day run-of-the-mill family and their hardships of today. It's all about the teenage daughter who's graduating from high school and she wants to go to college and she wants to room with her boyfriend. And this causes a lot of problems with her parents and her mother tends to talk about and her grandmother tend to talk about how, what they would have done when they were kids. And the main character is Penny Loyne who is um, the grandmother and she falls into a lot. She comes back from Greece? She's a famous actress. Yeah, she's a famous Mom actress over. from Rome. And Liz Cox, which is part of that, and she's a very good actress. And you go, then Anne is the teenage daughter, and that is Jenny Shirtliff. And Kevin, which is Anne's boyfriend, is Mark Kerr. And Dr. Mitchell is David Odding. He is Anne's stepfather. There's a lot of. Um, Double flashbacks. marriages, hot, yeah, flashbacks. a lot of flashbacks. It's the whole movie is basically flashbacks from when the, the movie. mother, the whole movie, the whole movie was the, the whole play is basically flashbacks, and it's a really good play, and it is student directed by Jennifer Morgan and our John Wall. <laughs> our John Wall. Our John oh, Wall. Oh, hey! Good. I yeah. have seen everything they're doing. They're doing, and I think it's neat because of the flashbacks and the way. The technical end of it is with the lights and, and that type of thing. We yeah. have been having a little bit of trouble with the lights, but well, no light booth. But it's coming along it's very good. good. It will be yeah. very have a very good effect because you have what maybe ten actors on the stage at the same oh, time. Oh, multi times, and we can have as many as like three different position of actors from three different times. Three different time yeah. eras. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a really interesting play. And it's. A melodrama, so you know it's got the comedy and the tear jerking drama part of it. Mm -hmm. now you, you both, you're both in it, right? Right. Just your young Penny. Young she Penny. plays, and that's Liz's character as a child when she was 18, and I am Tommy, and that is Donna's first husband, and he goes off to the war and gets killed. So he dies. He died. I just got noogie too, <laughs> but and I wish all you'd come because it's going to be a really great play and um, we've got the largest cast we've ever had at WCH uh, for a WCHS play. Mr. Zimmerman said. By the way, it is directed by Mr. Zimmerman and Mr. Hirschberger is in charge of all the set. Set. Yeah, and without those two, we wouldn't have school plays. So. Now, what what uh, is the set? Where is it located? Where does the basic all the action set. Take? The basic set, we have one basic set, and that is in the Mitchell household. And it's just basically in the living room. they got a sunroom and a front porch. And all the other acts from like the 1930s and the 50s all revolved in that one room because that's where all the memories came from. So they all lived in that yes. house then at one time. When Penny, like, she played youngest Penny, so she played the farthest back in the 1920s. 
she grew up there, so it just progressed, and the family just stayed there. What what years does it go back to? You said the 20s. It goes back to 20s. Um, 30s. Yeah, it goes when she was 18. It goes back to the 30s when she gets married. No, I didn't get married. You didn't get married? No. Oh, when you come back. I have a baby, but I didn't get married. You have a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can see, uh, you know, one of those babies. Then it goes to the 50s when she's an adult and she has Donna. I don't no, it's Donna. Yeah, but Benny. The character of Penny's in it. Yeah, Mother Penny. Yes. There's three Pennies. Yes. And two Donnas, so. So let's confuse our audience. Yeah. <laughs> We're just confusing you. Yeah, so it's got 20s, 30s, 50s, and modern day 80s. So the, that's, then again, the dates on that are 9th and 10th, mm -hmm. uh, 7.30 curtain time. I would assume both both the evenings, 7.30 yes. curtain time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's the play. Um, sounds really good. Uh, what else do we have in the arts world? Um, magical season. Ooh, magical we just season. we just started. We got our music a couple weeks ago, and we started that. And we found out the lead parts. Um, they go to Mike Shipley's going to be portraying the king, and wow. yeah. and as our queen, we got Beth Nettles. All right. Two fine selections, and and we started. We, we started. Our jesters. Oh, okay. Our jesters. Um, John Wall and me. David Aiken. We're the jesters. But um, we just got our costume. We started to hand out costumes. They're really neat. And we started the mailing list today. And we're mailing out invitations and everything. It's and uh, really fun. I'd just like to say if you don't receive, if you're not on the mailing list for that and you want to go, please just. Call the school and they will yes. they will help you with contact the school. Four 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 three one six three one six seven. I think we've done this before. Four 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 three one six seven extension twenty. Mm -hmm. But we big turnouts in the past years. We have a lot huge mailing list and the more the better. And that will be what nights are those? Are they have fifteen? No. I'm thinking. 14th, 15th, 15th, and 16th. 14th, 15th, and 16th, and the 16th would be the actual dinner night. Dinner night, and the other two are beggars night. Beggars night. Yes. And the only difference then would be food. Yeah, beggars night, you don't actually get a dinner, and dinner night, you get a dinner. <laughs> so. We'll we'll probably have you on uh, again probably next week yes. to talk more about magicals. Magicals more when it gets um, yes as it progresses closer to the mm -hmm. time. Um, Thank Do we you. have any other announcements for any art announcements? Chorus, band. Uh, the band marching season is over. Oh, oh shucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, we ended they, on a good note. They did good very note. good. <laughs> uh, we went to Western. Went to Western, and it was a we had a you know, tough competition, and we did we had our best show ever, even and we though we got sick. <laughs> yeah. And. Yes, I remember we have districts. We had districts tryouts, and we got the results of districts tryouts, and a lot of people made it. A lot of people made it. Almost everyone that tried, everyone that tried out, made it. I think. No. Yeah. Almost. Not everybody. Yeah, but there was a good portion. <laughs> <laughs> there was a very good portion, and okay, I'll admit, I was the only one that didn't make it, but everyone else <laughs> made it, and they did very good, and it's great because we had what about 20 people that made it. It's really great. So we have a huge represent representation from our school. Do you want to add anything? No. no. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being thank our you. arts correspondents this week. Oh. We have girls volleyball on for you. Uh, we're still hoping to get to that sometime soon. They ended their season 27 and 3 with a loss in the exactly. sectional playoffs to uh, state title defending Jacksonville. They were just very good. So <laughs> maybe uh, next week or the week after that, we'll have volleyball girls for you. Um, right now, we'll just go to Jake and Brad's world if they're ready. Oh! Sure they're ready. Hi, I'm Brad. <laughs> What'd he say? Uh-huh. And this is and this is Jake. And we are Jake's world and Brad's world. And Brad's not in tune yet. 
Brad was a minute ago, but Brad Jake's still know. miffed about last show. <laughs> we but want Brad. I understand this is a new guitar. We no, this, we're happy to okay. see Okay, I will explain this. Wally, my Charvel, is hospitalized for <laughs> serious <laughs> damages to a pickup. He's getting a. <laughs> he's getting a. In the guitar hospital. He's getting a double pickup uh, bypass and. Uh, <laughs> His active electronics are backwards for some reason, and we really don't know why. But he got sent away to the company, and he's getting fixed, and I don't have to pay for it. <laughs> That's on warranty, so I don't have to pay for it. Well, that's good. So, uh, and they gave me this loaner. A loner. <laughs> What's but, the name of your loner? I uh, I probably really shouldn't give out brand names or anything. It's a it's a no. no you named name. your other one Wally. I, I oh know. Wally, this is Fred. Uh, okay. Um, but since my loner guitar is out of tune, I thought maybe I would show Jake how to tune a guitar. Even All though, right, yeah. Even Jake though, doesn't care. <laughs> Did I miss something last week? <laughs> yeah, your uh, your absence caused uh, Jake to do some solo work that uh, just I wasn't very well obviously. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> I'm not very well liked here. <laughs> no, it's just so. your talents we don't like, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For well. lack of. Well, okay. Well, I just thought I'd teach Jake how to tune a guitar, even though his guitar is beyond being able to tune. <laughs> uh, True. First, Jake, um, on you like to, uh, would you like to hold your guitar up? Can somebody hold this? Sure thing. You're very good at that. Thank you. <laughs> Watch my face. I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ow. Anyway. Okay, okay, first, Jake, you put your not mad anymore. first right finger here, you put on the sixth string on the fifth fret. <laughs> oh, not this again. Fifth fret. <laughs> Which one's fifth? Fifth. You're on the third. Go up. Go. There. One, here. two, Where the three, big dot four. is. Where the big convenient dot is. He's supposed to get me those little dots, you know, you place on the neck of the guitar that Roy was anyway. his sells and... And you put the put your finger on the fifth fret on the sixth string, <laughs> and then you, you get that, and you also that should match the fifth string open. Okay, now you go and do the same thing with the fifth and the fourth string. What do you do if they aren't in tune, Brad? Um, you tune them. And <laughs> you throw this guitar away. <laughs> this guitar has a tremolo, so it has its own fine tuning keys. And these aren't used at all because there's a locking nut here, so when you use the tremolo and totally stretch the strings out, they'll still stay in tune. Mm. I know Normally. exactly what he's talking <laughs> about. Anybody else? <laughs> For all you guitarists out there who know what I'm talking about. Now that's not in tune, so I simply Obviously. turn this little knob here for the G string clockwise until it is in Getting tune. Closer, yeah. Counterclockwise. I think it's hopeless. What do you guys think? What song? song? I don't know any song. A theme song, Jake. What theme song? You know, for Jake's world and Brad's world. Wait. It's just. Oh. Okay, I'm ready. Right. You ready? Now. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm okay. He doesn't want to show it. Show it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we want to. 
wanted to hear the end of that or not. <laughs> oh, Brad. Anyway, can we have someone who, who set the tempo for us? In about 1.40 time, I think. 1.40? There was this guy named Jake. <laughs> he forgot he was supposed to be singing. There was this guy named Brad. They both had their own little worlds. They make this up as they go along. Because they forget how the words go. <laughs> so sometimes it's kind of lame. But that's the way it goes. That's what I'm talking about. I'll switch over to Channel V, the Queen Channel. <laughs> We've been listening to dirty music. That's good enough. Let's get dirty. I know. Uh -oh. There's something Mr. Woodward, Dr. Woodward, I'm sorry, might recognize. <laughs> Name that tune, Dr. Woodward. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> hey, cool. you guys could come out and play the guitar this good, then be my guest. Steppenwolf? Dr. Woodward. All right. <laughs> well, shame on you. One more, then we gotta be. Okay. One more, name that tune, real quick. It was Rolling Stones. Uh, uh, no, uh, no. You know, it's a gas gas dude. Jumping Jack Flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Thank Dwayne, you, Dwayne. All right, Dwayne. Yeah, Dwayne. All right, name this tune, someone. <laughs> Tune. It's the Jiffy commercial. <laughs> Close. It's Leonard Skinner. Give me three steps. Give me three steps. Okay. Well, Give me thank three you, Brad. steps. Oh. Yeah, sure. Jake and Brad's world next week. Audience poll. Audience poll. Please, please, let's have the audience, audience poll. poll. Audience poll. Audience poll. Audience poll. Audience poll. Audience poll. Please. Oh, great Messiah. Read the question poll. for this week was, what would you put on your bumper sticker if you were to make one? I break for traffic signs. <laughs> If you are illiterate, don't read this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I kicked a 51 yarder, now leave me alone. <laughs> hey, Mike! Mike, did you kick a 51 yarder? To Mike Raspin, and he doesn't want to hear about it anymore. That was beautiful, Mike. Elvis is alive and well and living in Toontown. <laughs> Brad's name should be first on the Grammy Award-winning Jake World. Oh, now, come on! That's about enough of that. I think Brad wrote that one. I'm appalled. That's preposterous. 
<laughs> you can read this. You are better at reading than Jake is playing a guitar. <laughs> That's it! I'm leaving! <laughs> I break to kick 51 yard field goals. <laughs> we have multiple. <laughs> if you know Carol Fischbach, you are blessed. <laughs> I didn't even write it. And on the back side it says, Honk if you don't want Carol to sing. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That really wasn't on the back. That wasn't on the back. Okay, so this one is all. Pay attention to this one. This one's long. Stick 'em or hey you jerk, if you can read this, you are way too close to my bumper, and I think it would be in your best interest to back off enough off so it is not any way possible to read this bumper sticker. <laughs> That was the audience poll for this week. Good, oh. good audience. Good job. Okay, we uh, hope to see you next week. We hope to see you at the play uh, soon at the Madrigals. Thanks for all our guests, and thanks Brad and Jake.